What's up, this is Dr. Taylor Crick at the Washington Wellness Center, and today's video is about how does autoimmune disease spread? And you may be thinking, well, wow, autoimmune disease spreads? Um, and I'm gonna explain that concept. There's three immune immunology concepts we're gonna go through, uh, molecular mimicry, bystander activation, and epitope spreading. I'm gonna to try to do it as quickly as possible though because this page is still for lay people and for patients. Um, so I'm not gonna go like super deep into the immunology here but just explain the concepts and just explain to you the fact uh, that autoimmune disease does in fact spread. Now it doesn't spread like how uh, you know a cold can spread you know through a family or something or, or you know you pass it from one person to the other this isn't the case but autoimmune disease gets worse so some facts about autoimmune disease that you know if you'll have one autoimmune condition you likely have more and then another fact is that the longer that you have it it continues to get worse and worse and worse so here are some of those some of those facts so when you have one autoimmune condition you likely have more so sometimes somebody comes into my office with rheumatoid arthritis uh, but they might actually leave with rheumatoid arthritis and Hashimoto's another thing if you leave the autoimmune fire burning like let's say you have an autoimmune condition like um, eczema and you're just like oh I don't really care I'm gonna let it be bad and, and you just let that keep going, it will damage other tissues eventually. So it, autoimmune disease will spread. So if, it, if you leave, let's say the thyroid fire burning, it can eventually go to the brain. Or if you leave the celiac fire burning, let's say that one because a lot of people don't know that they have celiac. If you leave the celiac fire burning, celiac's a big one because it's some of the other mechanisms with celiac, but celiac will lead to other autoimmune conditions really, really quickly. Um, another one is that it's just autoimmune disease fact for everything. Autoimmune diseases have some common causes like infection, toxicity, food sensitivities or leaky gut. And they also have some common triggers. So things like chronic stress, poor sleep, blood sugar imbalances, more infection, overgrowths. Uh, more food sensitivities, toxicity again, food sensitivities again, you know, infection again, everything again. Uh, and sometimes one thing started the fire, like uh, a viral infection or like, you know, you went to Mexico and you got food poisoning and, and you know, you're never the same. Uh, but something else is often continuing to fuel the fire, like diet or chronic stress. So I want to show you some labs. Uh, of something called a multiple tissue autoimmune panel and this is a lab from Cyrex and a lot of these people you know either didn't know they had any autoimmunity or they certainly didn't know that they had this much autoimmunity so these are self tissue antibodies so meaning that your uh, uh, your immune system has marked a, or mounted rather an attack against these tissues so this person has tissue antibodies against intrinsic factor in the stomach that helps absorb uh, B12. Fibulin, which is like in connective tissues, but it's also in a lot of other things too. Osteocytes, which is uh, bone cells. Myelin basic protein, so uh oh, so demyelinating diseases, MS, and synapsin, another neurologic antibody. The next person, intrinsic factor, off the charts. Uh, heart tissue, myocardial peptide, heart tissue, not, not, not great. Uh, fibulin again, myelin basic protein, a azeolagangliocide, and cerebellar tissue. And the next one, intrinsic factor, ASCA and ANSA, which is, uh, you can differentiate between Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, and it's also with like vasculitis and some different things. Uh, thyroid, thyroid peroxidase. Uh, ovary and testes, reproductive tissues, bone, osteocyte, uh, insulin, and islet cells. So, you know, could lead to a type 1 type of diabetes. Um, myelin basic protein, azeolagangliocyte. The last one, arthritic peptide. So, almost like an RA type joint type uh, connective, or um, yeah, joint, joint autoimmunity. Myelin basic protein and cerebellar. So 
It is very, 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 very common. We don't run this panel on everybody because it's the most expensive single panel that we run often. Um, but if somebody comes in with autoimmunity, the number one question or one of the first questions is where else is this fire burning? Because just because they know they have RA or they know they have Hashimoto's or they know they have Graves or they know they have uh, you know, celiac, eczema, psoriasis, MS, where else is the fire burning or is it clinically relevant to what we're going to do or clinically relevant to you know, the prognosis of, of your case or what we can expect? So how does autoimmune disease spread? I'm gonna show some graphics from, from one particular study, uh, which is talking about how viruses can cause autoimmunity. But the graphic shows these three different mechanisms. So the mechanisms are called <coughs> molecular mimicry, epitope spreading, and bystander activation. Here's the graphic. Um, and like it says, it says mechanisms of virus-induced autoimmunity. So I'm going to go closer, zoom in on the graphic, um, and just talk about each of these and try to you know stay kind of light on each of them. Um, but yeah, so molecular mimicry is basically a case of mistaken identity, almost like cross-reactivity. And so these viral antigens, so pieces of the virus that are presented to these autoreactive T cells. Okay, so autoreactive T cells are basically what make autoimmune disease happen. And they do the tissue damage and all the things. So these are like the things that are, we don't want. And the, the cell here is presenting viral antigens, but they just so happen to look a lot like self antigens. Like maybe this virus is Epstein Barr virus and it looks a lot like thyroid peroxidase. And then you get Hashimoto's. Maybe this virus is cytomegalovirus, and it looks a lot like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid factor. Maybe this virus is HHV6, human herpetic virus 6, and it looks a lot like myelin basic protein, and you get MS because of this molecular mimicry. So that's one way that it can spread. Or maybe your one tissue looks like another, maybe the virus tissue is, is thyroid tissue, and thyroid tissue looks like myelin basic protein. Maybe myelin basic protein looks like um, uh, uh, um, intrinsic factor. Those are those all commonly run together. So you could have two types of tissue that look like each other. You could have viruses that look like each other, and then they accidentally, by mistaken identity, tell this autoreactive T cell, hey, attack me, attack me, attack me. That's molecular mimicry. That's also how a lot, some food sensitivities can lead to autoimmune disease. That's how some viruses can lead to autoimmune disease. That's how autoimmune disease can lead to other autoimmune disease. The next one is bystander activation, or the next one that we're gonna talk about. And what that means is that if this is the tissue down here, okay, let's say the tissue is being damaged by something. In this picture, it's being damaged by a virus. Let's say it's being damaged by a virus, or let's say it's damaged by an injury, like you tear your ACL, and all of a sudden there are particles of this tissue floating through, and your immune system is doing surveillance, and it's like, whoa, we see these antigens from this damaged tissue, all of a sudden we now have autoimmunity because we now have seen these damaged tissue cells, we've got all this inflammation, we see that they're here, that we now have this autoimmunity that react against the tissue, so now we're damaging this tissue. So now we have autoimmunity. So let's say this tissue now, if that makes any sense, is, is joint tissue, right? Like your ACL, and it's collagen complex or fibulin or, or something. Um, so now you have autoimmunity. You tore your ACL, pieces of your ACL were floating around. Your immune system was doing surveillance and it picked those up as an enemy on accident, but now it's reactive against that tissue. So now number three is epitope spreading. Now you're damaging more and more tissue. So as you continue to damage more and more tissue, other pieces of tissue get floating in the bloodstream because more damage is being done. 
and your immune system begins to put a T-cell repertoire against other pieces of your tissue, so you get more T-cells reacting against more tissue and more epitopes. So that means that let's say, you know, forget this picture in the viruses, but let's say you have a autoimmune reactivity like uh, gluten, and so your immune system has mounted an attack against gluten then your immune system confuses gluten for thyroid tissue. So now, all of a sudden, your autoreactive T cells now recognize thyroid tissue as an enemy. And now, not only do you have a food sensitivity, but now you have an autoimmune condition because now it is damaging that thyroid tissue. Well, as that thyroid tissue gets damaged, then then, or let's say something else comes in and also uh, something else, so this one is gluten caused, this one is Epstein-Barr virus, let's say, and this Epstein-Barr is burrowed into the, uh, no, Epstein-Barr doesn't do that, let's say, let's say it's uh, H. pylori. H. pylori has burrowed into thyroid tissue and now more thyroid tissue is being released, so now we have autoimmunity against that thyroid tissue. And then as the tissue is being continually damaged more and more and more and more and more, more autoreactive T cells recognize that and continue to damage it more and more and more and more and more. So the point is, is that this is a vicious cycle and it can go from tissue to tissue or as it's in a tissue like your joints or your thyroid or your brain or your gut, uh, or any of the others that we saw, that, that, re, that uh, inflammation continues to get worse and worse and worse. So it's not just that you leave a small fire burning and it does more and more and more damage. No, it's as that fire burns, it catches other things on fire and the fire grows and grows and grows. And it's not just one area or one thing. It's now engulfed multiple different species and multiple different counties and multiple different, you know, homes and structures and, and you know, how fire gets when it's destructive. So that's the same thing with autoimmunity. So these pictures are all regarding how viruses cause autoimmunity. They're actually from this paper uh, called Viruses and Autoimmunity, a review of the potential interaction and molecular mechanisms but I, I honestly, I just thought that the pictures were, were decent illustrations of these three mechanisms, but it's not just how viruses can cause autoimmunity, it's how autoimmunity can actually spread tissue to tissue and how it continue, can continue to get worse and worse and worse and how something like a toxin or a virus or a food can cause tissue autoimmunity uh, in your body. So, hope that was helpful.